Ashes of Creation once again delivered in its September developers update. Although these events aren't on the same scale in comparison to nodes or freeholds with hype, they did do a good job showing us what is really going to bring the world of Vera alive. First off, we are going to talk about what exactly these events are. In the live stream, we saw what was called a wave event. Steven and the party are east of the Winstead node, which is the node that we saw last month in the node showcase, over near the area called the Highwayman Hill which was the area we saw in the updated cleric preview. An area that is normally overrun by bandits unless a story arc is triggered which could lead to zombies or minotaurs in that area. The event was pretty straightforward. Defend the caravan and the NPCs near it while fighting off a few waves of enemies that get progressively harder. Something that really doesn't stand out when it comes to world events compared to other MMORPGs at least on the surface. But there's a lot more to this system than I actually expected with how much of the world and the different systems it actually ties into. These events can be triggered by various means, such as killing mobs, collecting resources, certain story arcs coming online, sending out caravans, different node stages, and relationships between nodes. And when the event goes live, if you're close enough, you should see it on your mini-map. There may be a visual cue to it, like we saw with the caravan being attacked with the smoke coming up into the sky, and there will be a pop-up on your screen that shows the event. On this screen, it also shows the objectives, and you can click join in on it to partake in it, which puts you in a raid group with other players who are participating in that event, really bringing you together with new players and not having you embark on your solo adventures. Because MMORPGs are not meant to be played solo. Go socialize, you fools. The more people who join in, the more difficult the event can become, causing NPCs to be more difficult with increased health, more damage, and potentially even up upgrading themselves from a regular mob to an elite. And when you complete the event, well, the loot is based off several factors which will be more locked into with Alpha 2 testing. When the event officially ends, you get an initial distribution of gold and XP, but for physical items, currently it is set up for your reward to be based off participation time within that event. So the more time you put into the event, the better tier reward you could unlock. But things such as DPS and healing may tie into this as well down the road, but again, that's where that fine tuning in the Alpha 2 testing is going to come in. When the event is complete, whichever reward tier you fall within, it puts you into your own loot table. So those whom are standing back and not really doing much may not have as cool of rewards as that guy who's putting all out DPS into this fight the entire time. Once you gather your loot, there may or may not be an NPC hanging out to talk to you that can give you a quest on an active story arc in that area too, if there is a story arc actually active. If not, he probably won't give you anything, but it's really a cool way to kind of keep your player moving forward from story to story as you complete this event and he could be like hey this is happening over here and this is why we got attacked so i i really like that and i like how it keeps you going and it keeps you on a path that you don't actually have to follow but you could if you want Four types of events that we may see in ashes will have caravans transferring goods puzzles PvP events that have you pick one side or another when the event triggers, or even something like attending a funeral for an NPC. Not all events will be combat oriented, and some will just be more for flavor and to teach you something new about the world you're in. But what really makes these events stand out from those you may have seen in any other MMORPG is, well, they aren't just running on a loop or a timer. World events normally, they're kind of like show up at this time, fight this guy or do this, and then it ends and show up two hours later and do it again or they go within a loop and you have different stages to them and then you complete it and then the loop starts over from the beginning once it's done within ashes of creation the area you are in and the server you are on will need to be in a certain state for the event to trigger and the outcome of these events may alter the story of the server even further so for example if you trigger this caravan event and failed you could see a follow-up event based off this failure and if players fail too many of the events following this line it could end up triggering a new story arc, which as you may know, is a very large impactful chain of quests that can have tremendous impact on the server, changing up content and spawn tables and all sorts of stuff like that, which could also lead to another new event type being unlocked from here. So it's kind of like just an endless amount of events in a way. But overall, while the Ashes of Creation event showcase didn't quite bring the hype like some of the past streams, it was still very exciting to see and hear how these systems work what's behind them and how they tie into the world a bit more. But you know what did bring the hype? This.
In case you missed my previous video, Alpha 2 is now confirmed for 2024. Steven has stated in the past that Intrepid isn't giving us dates that they aren't 100% certain that they can hit. And now they know for a fact that Alpha 2 will be dropping in 2024. As we get closer, Intrepid will narrow down this time frame. And the next time they talk about it, they'll narrow it down by which quarter in 2024 we can expect it in. And from there, when they are sure of a date, they will give us one. And that is when the party will really begin. But before that, there will be spot testing that starts with PI testing and then Alpha 1 testing and then eventually Alpha 2 testers being brought in as well, which will all be under NDA to start and eventually lift when Ashes of Creation's Alpha 2 finally launches. I would be willing to guess that this will be something like late spring, early summer of 2024, which gives them some wiggle room so if something happens and they actually have to push this back even more, it still falls within that 2024 range. And as we get closer in will be giving us more info on what we can expect for testing in the beginning of Alpha 2, but manage your expectations because I see a lot of people out there who are saying, oh, we're going to have this in Alpha 2 or we're going to have that. Well, we probably will eventually, but we're not going to have everything at the launch of Alpha 2, and I would be surprised if we have more than the Riverlands. But it is very exciting because we now know once Alpha 2 starts, if you're in Alpha 2, you're always going to have Ashes of Creation to play because Alpha 2 is persistent through launch. It's persistent through through the betas and then launch and then it's going to turn into a ptr at launch so once alpha 2 drops you will be able to play and test and help shape the future for ashes of creation until it officially launches whenever that may be beyond that though in this live stream we also got some pretty cool art stuff which was missed last month i'm a huge fan of the art section of it i like seeing the concept art and i like seeing the progress of the saints as intrepid continues to build the world and you can see on the screen we got a few cosmetic skins that are coming to life in models and then we see the female and male Vec rocking tier 2 plate armor, which is said to be level 15 to 25 armor. But it's really cool to see these orcs wearing more than just cloth for once, because we really don't get to see a lot of this armor on other races right now. It's normally just the humans, which makes sense. We're starting in the Riverland, so that's where the Kalar humans are. But it's nice to see more and more races slowly being added into the mix and seeing different stuff. But what did you guys think of the event live stream? Drop a comment down below. And if you're new to Ashes and have yet to create an account, feel free to use my referral link in the description below where you can then jump in on the forums, buy some cosmetics, or just hang out until you can finally step foot into the world of Vera. Otherwise, be sure to click that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, and be sure to stay tuned for a lot more to come.